In this video, we're going to look at the refraction of light. Make sure you copy down all the slides that say copy, because they won't all say that. So to start off, we have our definition, which is refraction is the bending or changing in direction of light when it travels from one medium to another. So refraction is bending. Reflection is not bending. So when light travels from a medium of low density to high density, the light is slowed down and bends away from the normal. So you can see we have a normal here that is our dotted line. We've got air, we've got water, and we have a ray coming in. And when that ray hits, it is going to get slowed down. And when it slows down, it is going to bend that away. So there's uh, some practical uses to this, optical illusions. Um, a good one is this person in the kayak here who's trying to spot the treasure chest. And uh, of course the uh, boundary here of the water is causing the light to refract. So they think they see the treasure chest here, but it's actually back here. So another good example would be somebody fishing with a uh, spear. They uh, would uh, have to shoot the spear, not at the uh, thing they're seeing, but um, offset so it actually killed the fish and here's a clever little cartoon so the speed of light so where does this uh, bending actually happens well it actually happens at our boundary here and then uh, again as our uh, light ray leaves the block it reflects there so as light enters the plexiglass, it slows down or fracks. When light leaves the plexiglass and enters the air, it speeds up and bends once again. And again, notice that the light does not refract inside the block, but at our boundaries. So this is a little picture here to represent everything that's going on with reflection and refraction because they both can happen. So we've got air and water, and that line is meant to be the boundary. And we also have to consider our dotted line here, which is going to be our normal. So we're going to have a ray of light come in. This is going to be our incident ray. And this ray of light is going to do two things. Firstly, it is going to be uh, refracted. So this is our refracted ray. And at the exact same time, you've got your reflected ray. Now a couple things to point out that that distance there or that angle there and that angle there are both equal to each other. So that's going to be our angle of incidence and our angle of reflection up there. And let's not forget that we've got something down here to consider too, which is going to be capital R and represent our angle of refraction. So when light travels between two mediums at an angle uh, other than 90 degrees, it bends due to the change in speed. Again, you can see the bending here at our medium. So a couple things to ponder as well here that are incident ray, refracted ray, and the normal all lie in the same plane. Incident ray and the refracted ray are on the opposite sides of the line that separates the two media. And the angle of refraction is, designed, uh, is defined as the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. So this is what we saw on the last uh, or an earlier slide. But there's also a couple other rules that we have to consider that if the change in the medium causes a decrease in speed, the light bends toward the normal. And if the change in medium causes an increase in speed, so going from a substance probably into air, then the light is going to bend away from the normal. So again, it sort of depends where you have your normal to find. If you've got a ray coming from water and then going into the air, it's going to bend like that. It's going to speed up. If you had it from the air going into water, it's going to slow down and bend in that direction there. So... Uh, let's get this copy down here. We have to talk about the index of refraction. We're going to do some calculations. So uh, light travels fastest in a vacuum, and a vacuum is where there's no air. So we're talking about outer space. So we've assigned this value of 1. This is like our, where, um, it's our reference point. So that's like our speed of light in a vacuum. This is 1. So that's as fast as it can go. It can only go slower than this. So the larger the refracted index, the uh, more the medium decreases the speed of light. So really it has to do with density. Kind of the thicker and denser the object's going to be, the higher this number is going to go. So 1 is as low as it can go. So we do have an equation that we need to get down here. And our equation is N which is going to be our index of refraction, which is just that 1.0 we saw on the earlier slide, or, or could be that 1.0. We can do some calculations. 
Uh, we've got a C up top here. This is going to stand for our speed of light in a vacuum, measured in meters per second. And then we've got our V here, which is the speed of light in a given medium, also in meters per second. And note that N has no units. So we're going to use this equation now uh, in two different ways. The, the thing is that we are either going to do calculations where we calculate for N or where we calculate for V because C is a known. C is the speed of light. So these are some values that you could use for N. They could be on page 554 or any textbook or on the internet. You can look them up. So we've got light moving at the slowest through diamond and through the fastest through the vacuum of space. And we've got a few other values in between. All right, so here's a typical question we are going to do. Um, the speed of light in sodium chloride is 1.96 times 10 to the 8. Now, if you wanted to write that number out, it would be 196 followed by six zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So either of these ways will work. Um, if you're using this on a calculator, you have to use perhaps the EE button or the EXP button to represent uh, the times 8. Now, the speed of light in a vacuum is, this is a known, this is 3.0 times 10 to the uh, 8 meters per second. So we will never calculate this value. It is a known given quantity. So we are, in fact, in this question, going to calculate the index of refraction. That would be the n value. So those are our two knowns. And we're going to try to find n. So all we need to do in this question is take our two values and substitute them in for c and v. Now there is a way to simplify this because each of them has a times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You can actually just sort of cancel this out in the scenario. And uh, all this means is that if you have a calculator, you just need to go 3.0 divide by 1.96 Try that on your calculator, and you should get an index of refraction of 1.53. So the index of refraction for a sodium chloride solution is 1.53. Uh, again, if you looked up that value, I would expect it to be that. Now there's a second type of question we can do, and that is we're going to calculate how fast light can travel in a substance. So we're going to calculate the speed of light in olive oil if the index of refraction of olive oil is 1.48. So let's consider what we know here. We know C. It is a given. It is a constant. It is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then we also have this 1.48 given here. I'd like to point out that, again, we could write this 3.0 times 10 to the 8 as this. We've got a 3 followed by 8 zeros in this case. So if you're more comfortable typing that number in your calculator, I say do it. So we are going to, in fact, calculate V in this equation. So this is our original equation here. And then... To get V all by itself, we're just switching V and N around. So you get this formula for V. By the way, these are the only two versions of the formula that we're ever going to use. That's our first version. That's our second ver version. We'll never solve for C because we know C. So there is our mathematical equation. Now, again, you can do kind of a little cheat move here. You could go 3.0 and then divide it by 1.48. And you should get 2.3. And then we never really did anything with that, so then that is just being carried along here. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to write all the values in. So there's our C as an expanded unit. There is our index, and that's exactly what you should get if you type it in. I'd probably suggest doing it the first way around. And uh, there you go. So these two numbers here, this number here, and this number here are essentially the same number. So if you have a textbook um, that this came from, you can then now go ahead and do questions one to four on page 455.